If you watch enough Charlie Brown specials, you'll pick up the rules pretty quick. Snoopy only speaks in nonverbal vocalizations. <laughs> the adults are never shown on screen. You want me to pound the erasers? Yes, Miss Othmar. And when those off-screen adults speak, this is how they sound. The answer is two. Yeah. But what if I told you that last one's not always true? Patty, do you have the answer to problem six? So, there are things that you experience for the first time that connect with you, that resonate with you, and become your new favorite. Other things are like Scooby-Doo. I've talked about how that's my all-time comfort food cartoon because it was always there. Saturday mornings, weekday reruns before school, weekday reruns after school, there was always some iteration filling airtime. Then you get to be a cynical adult, and you realize that, pretty much by osmosis, Scooby-Doo is something you feel a strong personal connection to. Same goes for this blockhead. You grow up during a certain era, you're surrounded by these characters. Not just at Christmas, though it legit owns Christmas, by Dolly Madison. Not only did they keep planting their flags in other holidays, There'd be other specials through the year, drawn from the daily source material. Your school library is packed with the paperback collections, which could be devoured several at a time during long car rides. Plus, you've got these characters on everything. There's toys, school supplies, dishes, Snoopy, Charlie Brown, sometimes the whole gang. And if you want to beat the heat during the summer, it's yum yum fun that is cool and keen And its name is the Snoopy Snow Cone Machine You put ice cubes in and get a snow cone out This is fun Yum yum fun is what it's all about Did not realize they still make this thing. So once again, basically without realizing, I grew up knowing quite a bit about Charles Schultz's creation. Watching all those specials, I learned the three rules pretty quickly. And it stood out to me when they got broken. She's a Good Skate, Charlie Brown, premiered in 1980. The focus is on Peppermint Patty, as she trains to enter an ice skating competition with Snoopy as her coach. The only thing that keeps me going are the encouraging words of my coach. The special is an adaptation of a series of strips from 1974. It's a nice, low-key story, lesser known since it's not tied to a holiday. And it's a good starring role for Peppermint Patty, who doesn't often get the spotlight. That's good, eh? There's some nice skating animation, drawn from reference material of real skaters, including Charles Schultz's daughter, Amy. And, however you interpret it, the dynamic between Peppermint Patty and Marcy is always entertaining. I don't know how to sew, sir. That's it! You can make me a red outfit with lots of sequins. You're not much for listening, are you, sir? One of Peppermint Patty's defining traits is that she's bad in school. She gets confused. She doesn't pay attention. She falls asleep. She's probably on the ADHD and autism spectrum, and she's from a time when they didn't even have Ritalin yet. So naturally, we get some scenes of her in class but where you would expect the voice of the off-screen teacher to be the standard muted trombone. I'm awake, I'm awake! Patricia, are you aware of what's happening? No, ma'am, I don't know what's going on, but I'm awake! It happens again later, when they go to buy some fabric for her skating costume. How about denim? Are you sure denim will stretch enough? Again, this is something I noticed when the special aired in 1980. But back then, there was no YouTube, and believe me when I tell you that none of the kids in school cared. So, that was a strange anomaly, but at least the other two rules are still, oh wait, they've shown a butt-ton of adults. Starting with the fourth Peanuts feature film, Bon Voyage, Charlie Brown. Adult, come back! 
also from 1980. Bon Voyage took Charlie Brown and a small posse on a trip to England and France. Bread, s'il vous plaît. Merci. The movie was mostly a chance for Schultz to revisit his own experiences in World War II. As such, the plot doesn't really kick in until about minute 50 of this 75 minute movie when we get an info dump about Charlie Brown's grandfather, Silas Brown, and the chateau where he was stationed in the war. And for some reason, this Brown family history is given to Linus. Bon Voyage was a departure from previous Charlie Brown movies, which would expand the scope of the stories, but the stakes would still be small scale and character focused, and no meaningful interactions with adults. Here, even before we see Silas Brown, we both see and hear a ton of adults, none of whom seem that phased by some eight-year-olds and a beagle roaming Europe unsupervised. Francois, something drastic has to be done. In honor of American guests, we will conduct classes, both in English and French. Where to, governor? Blimey, it's a bit dicey understanding these yanks. That taxi driver had more dialogue than Lucy. So, this time there was a reason to hear adult voices. But in researching this video, I think I may have found the answer I was looking for. Or at least enough to make some presumptuous assumptions. She's a good skate, Charlie Brown, and Bon Voyage, Charlie Brown and Don't Come Back were both released in 1980 and shared the same voice cast for the child characters, which means they probably recorded both projects at the same time. And since they knew we'd be hearing adults in Bon Voyage, they decided not to hire Dean Hubbard, their regular trombone player. For the few lines of adult dialogue in She's a Good Skate, they used actors from Bon Voyage. Would you like to see some polyester double knit? Ladies and gentlemen, we're about to start our in-flight films. In the front and rear sections, the film Laughing Bunnies will be shown, plus Naughty Marietta in the center section. So long, Chuck. I'm going to the center section. It's even possible that the trombone was planned for She's a Good Skate. <laughs> Problem number six. And because they were busy trying to make both a regular series of TV specials and a movie, they didn't realize they didn't have a trombone player until it was too late and figured, what the heck? So that's my theory. Feel free to debate, discuss, poke holes. I'll even start. Why couldn't they just reuse the trombone recordings they already had? Add yours in the comments or at me on Twitter. The other thing I discovered in my research is that in both of those projects, Peppermint Patty was played by Patricia Patz. That story again, Patty Patz played Patty. Adults made more animated appearances, but most of those were in offshoot projects where they'd be cosplaying some questionable stories of American history. Good evening, lad. I hear you make kites. I would like to borrow a kite from you. So call those non-canon if you have to. This was also the last feature film with the characters until the Peanuts movie in 2015. And one more instance that I discovered while I was researching this video that I think is pretty significant. In terms of adult sightings, we've had lots of randos, some historical figures, and one grandparent. But in the 1983 special, Is This Goodbye, Charlie Brown? We see actual parents. Repeat, we have a parent sighting. So, quick summary. Linus and Lucy's dad gets a new job and the family will be moving away. There are reactions, soul searchings, emotional goodbyes, good stuff. But here's what I wanted you to see. Watch the family station wagon. They're pulling out. Here they... Ah, freeze that. Yes, zoom and enhance. Right there, see? From far away and behind a window frame, there's Mr. and Mrs. Van Pelt. We have parents. We're through the looking glass here, people. Oh, and spoiler for a 40-year-old cartoon, the dad changes his mind and they move back by Dolly Madison. So we've both heard and seen adults, but at least Snoopy is still, yes, of course, Snoopy has spoken. There have been two stage musicals based on the strip. The first, from 1967, was the off-Broadway classic, You're a Good Man, Charlie Brown. Happiness is 
finding a pencil, knowing a secret, telling the time. Which I guarantee your high school has done at some point. Mine did when I was 17, and I tried so hard to get the tape. The musical was adapted to animation in 1985. And in the show, unlike the cartoons, Snoopy speaks. But something seems to be missing. In my opinion, that was exactly what was needed. Even has a couple of songs. Cozy home, board and bed, sturdy roof beneath my head. Not bad, not bad at all. If I can engage in some baseless assumption, I would guess the reasoning was, how are you gonna do You're a Good Man Charlie Brown and not have Snoopy sing Supper Time? Bring on the soup dish, bring on the cup, bring on the bacon and fill me up, cause it's supper, sup, sup, supper time. So the rule was waived, though there were still plenty of Snoopy's vocalizations. Gotta watch out for every little whoops. <laughs> Snoopy's speaking and singing voice was played by Robert Towers, a TV, voice acting, and stage veteran who had played the part in the original L.A. cast. Cam Clark took over the role when they adapted the sequel, Snoopy the Musical. Stealing the show, my mom wouldn't know her pup. And to date, that's the last time Snoopy has spoken in animation. By Dolly Madison. We're all used to this portrayal of Snoopy, but where did it come from? In Snoopy's early comics appearances, he was much more dog-like. And like the later cartoons, he had sounds and reactions, but no speech and no thought balloons. He first shared his inner monologue in 1952, and gradually developed that rich inner life he's known for. But the story goes that when Schultz, animator Bill Melendez, and producer Lee Mendelssohn were developing a Charlie Brown Christmas, to quote the New York Times, Mr. Schultz would not countenance the idea of a beagle uttering English dialogue. So Melendez basically went bleh into a mic and sped it up. And that became part of his job for 40 years. Melendez also did the voice for Woodstock. He continued playing both parts until his death in 2008, and his recordings were reused in the Peanuts movie. And the tradition has continued to this day in Peanuts projects by different studios with various actors going blah into a mic. One treatment that I think is kind of underrated is the series called Peanuts Motion Comics. These three-minute shorts consisted of direct adaptations of classic Peanuts strips. Too tired even to get up for supper, eh? Well, you know what I'm going to do? Just to show you I'm a good guy, I'm going to fix it so that you can eat without getting up. Released on iTunes in 2008, and currently available here on YouTube, these looked and played like you'd expect from a Charlie Brown cartoon, right down to the Vince Guaraldi and Mellow Jazz. How can you do your schoolwork without an eraser? Are you insinuating that I'm the kind who makes mistakes? Then you get to Snoopy. It's another way to signify that this is his inner monologue rather than a beagle uttering English dialogue. Your Van Gogh wasn't harmed a bit. <sighs> again, if you want to get pedantic about it. And again, all this is in contrast to the comics, where the rules, once they were established, stayed firm. Not counting the occasional shrine to Beethoven, the last adults in the strip were seen in 1954 when Lucy joined a golf tournament. There, they were shown from the neck down or from a distance. To my knowledge, we've heard adults in the strip twice, 
both times from Linus and Lucy's grandma. Basically because it was necessary for a joke to land. Oh, and sometimes when they'd watch TV. But if I'm wrong, again, yell at me in the comments or on Twitter. Once Snoopy's inner monologue was firmly established, the conceit was also used for, and stay with me here, the school building, which would philosophize about being a school building and had a soft spot for Sally. So once those rules were in place, Charles Schultz generally stuck by them. And there was another thing he very deliberately avoided, a character he didn't show, even when the cartoons did. It's a subject you'll be surprised to find I have a lot to say about. But that's for another video. Before I go, did you catch the new face? Here's the full piece, even got Da Vinci in there. That's the work of the very talented Ruby Eggrolls, who I commissioned after she posted this amazing self-portrait in the Bob Burgers subreddit. And one last question. What's your dance? Tag yourself while you're down there liking and subscribing. Blimey, it's a bit dicey understanding these yanks. <laughs>